Hello everyone, welcome. Um, today we're going to be going over our game page turner. This is the storytelling sort, and I am the producer, Brandon Brennan, and I am joined by the creative director, Austin Mashad. And today we're kind of going to go through memory lane, look at all the stuff that we did from the very beginning all the way to the end. I'll be chiming in, adding some details of how the production went, and then Austin is going to go over some of the finer details of what he was aiming for and the goals that he ended up reaching. So to kind of start things off, Austin, did you kind of want to go over some of the art assets and concepts that we got going on here? Yeah, so right now what we're seeing is just our initial iterations of various concepts, um, the style we wanted to go for for the art as well as some of the character and enemy designs. Um, so, and now we're looking at the very first iteration of our gameplay. This was the most functional um, version that we had to begin with. So it's, uh, it's definitely gone through a lot of changes. It's interesting to look back and see everything in this state. You know, everything's white box. There's not really any textures going on. The character controller is completely different. So, um, but it's, it's, it's nice to look back and see where everything ended up. Um, it's strange because we had such a such a different approach to the gameplay at the beginning of this. So the glide was completely different in how it was used and how it felt while moving. The frog jump was used as a charge jump. Um, and we had like a much higher jump for the character. I believe this character was actually a lot smaller than what we ended up using. Um, yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, our team had to go through about three different iterations of the character. And then also, I think, as we're moving on to the third sprint, the dynamic of how the team approached development in the sense that all of the departments, the entire department approached a certain process. I think that really affected how the earlier part of production went. Yeah, and I mean, we can see here, like, so what we just saw was the, the prototype. Um, we're now going to sprint three. So this is right before our vertical slice submission. So we're starting to see the game actually come together into a fully functioning game. I mean, we have menu, we have um, a lot more art assets and textures, um, the character model, the animations. This was a huge step for our game in, in the development process. Um, the jump from prototype to sprint three was, was a, a huge jump in my opinion. Um, we definitely still had some issues going on at this point. It wasn't perfect. Um, but it was really starting to come together and we could finally start to see what the game was going to be. Um, there's some more clips from our earlier iterations before that prototype that we just watched, but uh, going from that prototype to this was, was a pretty big jump. Um, being able to see the difference of art assets and everything like that was, was pretty awesome. We had a lot of new For sure, stuff. for sure. I oh, know. I was just going to add in that the the jump from prototype to sprint three really showed what the team was capable of, and then I would say, especially when the video hops over to vertical slice, a lot of the ideas that you were wanting to get out really started to come to life. Yeah, that was definitely where we where we realized like our team could really uh, pull it all together when they needed to. So we started to see that you know our art team was working incredibly fast. And I mean, you can see that here. Um, there was a there was an art demo in that uh, that prototype clip that we just showed at the end. There was a where we you know they had a lot of these assets uh, fully created and textured, so we had those in a separated uh, demo from the gameplay. But this is where we really brought all the art and gameplay that we had at that point together, and we start to see the early iterations of some of our systems like the vents here. Now they're really rough at this point, and it's actually hilarious to look back and see where they were at. Um, Right here, too, I was astounded to see where Glide was at at this point. It just, like, accelerates you at, like, Mach 7 straight into a wall. The only way to get out of it was to hit something so that you could break the collisions. Um, remembering the older character controller, you know, it's, it's all really weird to look back, but it's it's great to see that huge jump where we really, the team really hit their stride here in being able to connect together and bring all their work into one thing. Um, that was a worry at first, and just seeing like how smoothly was everything going to integrate together. And surprisingly, it was, mm -hmm. it was really nice. You know, we get our one of our first iterations of the um, of the storybooks. I mean, this was before we even had art for them. And then you know, we move into vertical slice. Now, I don't know what 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 you would think of it, but I think 
you know, aside from some other additions, like we, you know, we have theater in our menu here, obviously. Um, vertical slice to, sorry, sprint three to vertical slice. I don't want to say there was no change, but it was definitely, it was definitely slow in scale. I think a lot of what changed here was backgrounds. Yeah, definitely. I was gonna say for the from sprint three to vertical slice, I'll definitely say that the the amount of work done in terms of systems being added, like new systems being added or new assets being added that weren't refinements of things we saw before, was definitely a lot smaller compared to prototype the sprint three. But I do think sprint three really set the groundwork for us to refine things in vertical slice. And then, of course, when that next sprint comes up, it really starts to take off. Yeah, I think, um, like I said, I think right here in Vertical Slice, a lot of what changed was um, kind of in the background. I mean, aside from the obvious visuals mm -hmm. of, you know, we had our first cutscene out of here, like we just saw, um, we had a more, we had more going on in the UI, the life system, the banners that would pop up, and we had... At this point, we had removed all the white boxes, so um, for vertical slice at least, we added in VFX. You know, there, there was obvious visual change, but in terms of the overall process, especially when comparing what we saw in um, Prototype to Sprint 3, you know, like the changes here, they're not as massive, or at least for what the players are able to see, but in terms of the um, behind-the-scenes stuff, there was still quite a lot of change, but I think the focus here was polish, you know, for our vertical slice. Definitely, definitely. But that raises a question. Do you feel like Vertical Slice got the vision across that you were wanting for the game? Even though we know it kind of got hit since the game's obviously out and whatnot. But back then, how did you feel about the outcome of Vertical Slice? So I was happy with where we were at. Um, it's definitely, there were things that I wanted to change. There were improvements that we still needed. There were things we didn't get to at this point, um, but I think mm. what we were shooting for and kind of what our goals were from the get-go, I feel like consistently throughout the development process of this game, we were able to really hit the goals that we set, um, especially once we got through the, the, the planning period. You know, once we planned it all out and you and I sat down and got a schedule and everything, kind of everybody situated with their tasks, I feel like once we narrowed down what our actual goals were going to be, we hit them consistently. So I was I was personally happy with Vertical Slice, but I knew there was a lot to change, um, or a lot that was going to of change. Of course. And I think we start to see a lot of those changes here with Sprint 5. So this was our first sprint of the second semester. And I mean, again, this was another sprint where we spent a lot of time working on polish and background stuff. I know um, Christian, our lead programmer, he was in the process of setting up a completely new character controller. We implemented a lot of new systems, like the fast travel system, because we actually, um, instead of having everything play as one large level, um, we made a huge switch where we, we separated everything by individual levels, so you have these loading sections in between, but that gave us the ability to create larger spaces um, and to add a little bit more detail and depth to them. Um, we were also starting to see a lot of changes here with lighting. Um, and there were changes to the abilities, like we're seeing glide changes here. But again, I think in the next slice, we see a completely rebuilt character controller. But um, I think some of the bigger things, like visual, that the people actually saw, like I said, a lot of the changes here were behind the scenes. It was the team reorganizing the project. But you know, we, mm -hmm. we added the north, we switched from, you know, like the drama section and stuff like that. We turned this into the north wing. We completely revamped the layout for this section. Um, we started adding in like the chandelier. We started going back to like white boxing as we added in new sections. Um, so it, in a way, it felt like we were, I remember saying at the beginning, it felt like we were taking a step back. Um, but I think in the back. long run. Yeah, I think a yeah. step back in terms of like where we were at, because like vertical slice felt complete in a way, but we made so many mm. changes um, that it felt like a step back, not necessarily in a negative, but uh, I think it all paid off in the end. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. And I think 
the way that Sprint 5 ended up working, as you were saying, was a lot of back-end systems, and that kind of leaked over into Sprint 6, where we really wanted to refine those back-end systems. And then the way that we approached development internally, in the previous uh, sprints, we had it to where you know each department, if there was a big thing to be done, everyone from that department was working on it. But then here, you know, we ended up breaking up the departments, one designer, one artist per section, because the numbers worked out. And things definitely started getting finished a lot more efficiently, I would say. There was definitely an understanding between each artist and each designer of what you were looking for. And I think it really starts to show in Sprint 6 and 7 when the sections really started to come together. It was a slow start, but it definitely paid off in the end. Yeah, I agree. And I think, like, I mean, we just saw a lot of new systems that were added here. We have a new inventory system. We showed off a new character controller. We have new systems like the cutscenes here playing for the intro. This is our first look at the East Wing, actually. Um, there were a lot of changes here with the cutscenes. The new, you know, we started showing that we were moving towards um, consistent yet unique art styles for each section. Um, and I agree with what you were saying, where once we started separating the teams and breaking them off to have uh, one person from each department focusing on a section or a mechanic, I think that you're really. The team, the team had hit their stride by vertical size, but I think this is where we really started to take off and be able to capitalize on mm-hmm. what we learned about each team member, the um, team, and their strengths and skills. So, you know, I mean, here we had a lot of additions to this section. We saw just then the East Wing and what was just right there, the West Wing. We had our new lantern abilities. We had the AIs being implemented. So there were a lot of systems, a lot of art, and a lot of changes to the gameplay, and yet it all came together very smoothly in a, in a pretty short amount of time. And I think that that's a consistent thing that we started to see throughout the process. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's, it's weird to look back on because I remember very distinctly back then from sprint to sprint, every time we presented the project in its current state, things did feel somewhat slow because mm-hmm. there's just little things here, little things here, and a lot of it all the way until I would probably say end of sprint seven, sprint eight, was back-end systems, refining it, making sure it came out great, making sure it's the way that we wanted. The player controller, especially. And I mean, it definitely, definitely pays off, even though you kind of see the cloth physics freak out and whatnot. The way that the player controller came about and the way that that was organized and all the other systems got built on top of it. Because, I mean, if anyone ever gets a chance to look at our player controller, look at the scripts connected to it on how many things are intertwined, with the way that it works, it's it's impressive. It's it's terrifying, honestly. It's kind of look at all of it. It was a yeah, <laughs> it really it was is. a very intense system, and, and it was, the reason I say it's terrifying is because everything was so interconnected, like you said, to where you know we change something here, or we need to fix something here, or something goes wrong here, and it affects ten other things. You know, but but like I said, I think like I think looking back, like right here, we're seeing yet another new system and mechanic added in the the climbing. Um, we're seeing an in like, this is a huge difference in art assets between what we saw last time, which was essentially a whole white box, to now we're seeing unique assets, textures, models for each section. Um, we're seeing slight lighting changes. We're seeing new additions to mechanics like lanterns. So I think one of the biggest things, like you mentioned, it started to feel slow after a while, and I definitely felt that as well. I was like, man, we're not, we're not getting enough done. Um, and I think what I realized actually while putting this video together, looking at looking at each slice and lining up similar sections from each slice side by side to be able to see. I think, I think what I'm saying is I noticed the small changes that you were just talking about. I noticed that mm-hmm. more here when I looked back and I was like, you know, I remember at this point in what sprint seven, I was starting to feel like we were behind, you know, and we weren't really going to be able to hit everything, but looking back and seeing how much was changing sprint to sprint, I think the difference is that like things were solidified at this point. So we weren't changing every single system. It was just, it was new things and it was adjustments to things we had in there, but it was, uh, it was a lot of small things and they all started to kind of add up. So I think actually right here is about, this is one of my favorite, um, transitions, I think in the period of the game. So between sprint eight, which is what we're looking at right now, our alpha release and sprint nine. Um, the videos that I put together are pretty similar, so we'll see these same mechanics and systems, but we'll see their, you know, what I would say is their, like, final prototype version, 
and then we'll get to see their actual final version. It's really cool. Um, you know, and the, here we started to finally see the 2.5D books, which I think looking back, the 2.5D books were probably the biggest stressor for me throughout the entirety of the development. I know that was probably Ian and I, you know, Ian, the lead designer, we, uh, we went back and forth so many times on the 2.5D books and how we were going to do what was going to be added and changed. And I'm happy with how they came out, but I know that they were probably the most like cut down content in the game. Yeah, I would definitely say just, I would say the, the nuance of how you incorporate that 3D, 2D environment into this world that we've created. It's definitely, there's no easy solution. And I'm sure even now, if you were to try and tackle the books, it'd probably end up a little bit different. But in a way, I think the solution that you guys came up with, that's what makes them unique to the game and then to the the world that we've ended up creating. But I've definitely, I remember all the uh, sleepless nights and many questions of how to approach the books. Yeah, and like I said, there were so many iterations. And I mean, you can see here, this was a nice point because this is, I think, one of the first times where we had all of the books in the game finished with all the art. They were no longer, we, we were done with them. You know, it was nice to move on. And then we got to start focusing on bigger things like what we just saw there was the um, prototype for the boss fight that Ian and I set up. Um, you know, and so like I said, right here, we've got our second trailer. Um, and this trailer did a really nice job of putting together and showing off Follow kind of the like candles. the, the, the new they will light your touches way. to everything here. Uh, there's no sound, but we're starting to hear the, uh, the voice lines, the voice acting, which this was also the first slice where we had the voice acting fully implemented. Um, library is a, a wonderful area here in the world. She loves it in here. Yeah. So many memories. It went through so many changes in um, such a short time. Mm -hmm. Beyond those doors, I think this is better really left really untouched. Oh, you know, for sure, for sure. And then it's it's almost impressive how much the game really felt like it was coming together in that final sprint. Like, obviously stuff was done before, but the release to manufacturer sprint really sealed the deal. Yeah, and I, I can't say that we completely avoided crunch you know like every every i feel like every development team is always like that's the the goal where everybody always starts off by saying there's not going to be any crunch i don't think we ever approached it in that way but i know that we were always trying to avoid it and definitely there were some nights here that were late nights um but a lot of that was was me and some of the leads staying up to really hammer out what we were going to put in as our final touches what what where we were going to put that cut off in for the final touches i think um and you know here we're getting to see where that paid off we saw the first iteration of the um all these systems here the ui um and settings and all that and now we're getting to see its final iterations and like i said the change it made was astounding because it went from just being the basic text popping up on the screen to be you know, a fully functioning, professional-looking system, and I think that that was the biggest, um, <clears throat> the biggest moment for me in the development. Well, the the end of the development, I mean, um, is when we really saw it all come together like this, and just be able to say, like, "Wow, it's done." You know, there mm. was. I, I said this to a couple of people when we had our um, when we had our team dinner afterwards, um, and it was like, and. I cannot tell you how good it felt to do the final playthrough of this game, the final little test, just to be like, yep, it's all there, it's it's done. You know, I, I play tested this game so many times throughout development. I played through it probably more than anybody else, hopefully more than anybody else. It was part of my job, but I 
every time I did that, I had my notebook out and I was writing down, we gotta add this here, this is still missing, this needs to get done, this needs to be re reworked, here's a bug here, this is a problem, we still need to add this, oh, what if we did this here? Like, it was just constant, I was analyzing it constantly to look at what else was needed in that final playtest, I didn't do that at all. I just sat back and enjoyed everything being put together and seeing it all there, and it was my favorite playthrough of the entire production of the game. Mm -hmm. I would definitely say, at least, it has to de yeah, it has to be said, the team absolutely killed it. There are so many talented people on that team. And it just, the way that everything kind of came together, I think everyone felt it when we were presenting that final version. Just the, like, it was cohesive, and it felt like a full package from start to finish. And that's probably the most impressive thing about it. Yeah, and I mean, we were essentially at this point two sprints ago, you know, where everything was relatively cohesive. We had some bugs with transitions and things like that, but, and we were still, you know, we hadn't fully implemented our narrative, like what we're seeing here. But... The game was done, it just, it, we added so much polish in the last little bit, and I think that that polish is really what made it all come together, like these cutscenes here that Ian put together, and mm. you know, the new textures we added to Ari and things like that, they were just, they were really big changes for me. So, I mean, we're coming up to the end, I think there's, we're gonna cut to the end of this little cutscene here, and we'll have the credits and stuff, but um, yeah, I, I think overall, this was definitely um, one of the most, uh, one of my favorite projects that I've been able to work on. Oh yeah, no, for sure. And I think it, it really shows with the team, if you ever meet any of us. Everyone's a friend of each other, everyone kind of knows each other, and it the game really reflects that. Yeah, I think that... Um, I think the, being able to work <laughs> with everybody um, and see how well team came together like I, I i talked with a bunch of people about this at the dinner where we all said like i would work with any of you like whenever like i would work with all of you as mm -hmm. I you know and i i think everybody on the team felt that way and you know it's it's rare that you see that i've i've gathered a, a, a group of people from my last couple of projects that i've worked on in the over the course of this degree you know, two or three people here and there, one or two from each team that I've worked on that I was like, wow, these were really great people to work with. I really, I really vibe with these people and it, we were able to create something fun um, and that we all enjoyed. And this project was different because we had, at the end of the, at the end of this project, we had 14 people on our team and I would work with all 14 of them, whatever, anytime they wanted to, you know, we were talking about doing game jams over the summer and, you know, maybe looking at some other projects together later on. It was just, Everybody worked so well together, and I think, honestly, that was our biggest strength throughout the entirety of this development process, was our team was just, everybody was invested, everybody was committed, for sure, and everybody wanted to be here and was proud of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. It was definitely, it was definitely the, uh, about as close to a perfect mixture as you could have gotten for a development team of yeah. this size, I would say. And I definitely couldn't ask for more. No, I, I agree, and, um... I think you know we'll, we'll finish up here in just a second because we are a little bit past our 20 minute mark here but um i think overall like you said i think our biggest strength was our, our team was just absolutely incredible from start to finish everybody was um so talented and so invested and and not only did people come in with strong talents but they left with new ones i can't tell you how many people we had everybody on our team they were motivated to learn you know they were motivated mm. to to improve and to add new things to their skill sets that would then benefit the game. And I, I, I think every single person on our team had a point where they're like, yeah, let me go learn how to do that. Let me go research this. Or, hey, can you teach me how to do this since you know? So it was this constant back and forth, not only improving the game, but improving ourselves as developers. And that was a, um, that was a really cool thing to see the whole teams come together, like how the code team would do like weekly code trainings, essentially throughout, you know, on their, on their meetings and, you know, you and Nadia working with the art team to teach new systems like baking and things like that that you know they might not have been aware of. Aware of. Um, it was just amazing to watch all that happen. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that one. But uh, I guess with your time going over, would you uh, want to close things out? 
Yeah, we can, uh, we'll, we'll finish up here. And uh, I think one of the last things that I'll say is just I want to thank our team again. They, they may not hear this video, but uh, I, I, I cannot express enough how much I appreciated all the work that they put in. Um, how, how happy I was to see everybody's hard work pay off. And like I said before, we, we hit every goal we had. You know, there were some goals that, you know, got scratched off earlier on, but the final list of goals we had, we hit them. And uh, I feel like that's that's something rare that you get to see in, in development. You get to do pretty much everything you want to. So, mm. yeah, this was an amazing experience. I can't wait for the, for the next, you know, big development that I jump into. But um, I hope that some of our team members that we had here are on that next project as well. Yeah, no, definitely. The future is bright. We'll have to see what it holds. All right, well, we're going to finish up here. Thanks for jumping in with me, Brandon, to put all this together. And uh, thanks for everything that you helped me with over the uh, development process here. That was um, that was a lot of help. I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't even begin to describe how much help that was. The assistance. Of course. Organizing everything and keeping everything on track and planning out my disorganized thoughts. <laughs> It's all part of the job, and I mean, having a strong creative vision is all the team really needed to get uh, get the project going, so got to pat yourself on the back, too, when you get a chance. I'll try sometime, but uh, I think we're going to end up there, so thank you.